Now we're going to assemble and install the on and off switch, or in steampunk parlance, begin and cease. You'll need the switch, the engraved label, the front panel, and the exciting bag of copper parts. You'll also need your pliers and small positrive screwdriver. Find the brass fitting that looks like this, and unscrew the larger nut. Now remove the nut and plastic washer from the switch. Place the large brass nut you just undid onto the switch shaft with the threaded end facing outwards. Put the plastic washer onto the shaft, followed by the switch's nut. Then tighten the nut firmly with your pliers. Now place the rest of the brass fitting through the engraved label and hole in the front panel of your Nemnet throb well. And screw the switch assembly to it so it's finger tight and still able to rotate a little. Find the brass winged key and slide it onto the end of the switch shaft. You want to rotate the switch assembly until the key clicks right and left whilst pointing at the right part of the label. Once everything lines up properly, tighten the switch assembly firmly and remove the brass winged key for later use. Now you'll need some more parts from the bag of plumbing fittings. The large brass Munson ring, the medium Munson ring and the small Munson ring three large brass washers and the three large steel bolts. You'll also need the base of your Nepnet throb well and the wooden washer marked B. Place one of the bolts through the top hole in the right hand side panel. Put a large brass washer on it. Pick the largest Munson ring and screw it onto the bolt. Hold the bolt's head with your fingers or pliers and tighten the ring until it is firm and sits vertically. Now repeat the process with a medium sized Munson ring and another large brass washer and the wooden washer. Tighten the Munson ring as before so it sits vertically and the two look like this. Now put the final steel bolt into the hole in the bottom panel. Place the final large brass washer onto the bolt and screw on the smallest Munson ring until it is tight and sits vertically. Now you'll need these bits and pieces, the air pump, the longer length of copper pipe, the shorter length of copper pipe which is a reducer fixed in one end, the length of rubber tube, the 15mm copper elbow, the 15mm copper reducer, the large length of copper pipe and the funny looking thing which is actually a 28mm by 15mm by 15mm fitting. The following assembly involves sticking the copper parts together to form an airtight seal. This can be achieved using PVA glue, but it will take a day or two to dry as the copper is not porous. Alternatively, if you feel confident, you could use super glue. This sets chemically with moisture from the air, so fixes the copper very quickly. I'll first show you how to use the PVA glue. Squeeze a line of it around the end of the fitting you want to stick. Smear it around the inside of the fitting and then push the pipe in, twisting it a few times to ensure the glue makes a good seal. The joint won't reach full strength for a day or two, but is sticky enough to stay together while you complete the rest of these instructions if handled gently. Alternatively, if you feel confident, use the super glue. Squeeze some around the inside edge of the fitting, ensuring it goes right round. Don't spread it out with a finger, otherwise you'll have a problem wearing gloves for a while. The pipe will spread out the glue as you push it in. Now push the pipe into the fitting in one steady movement, twist it a bit and leave it a couple of seconds to set. If you put excessive super glue inside the fitting, the excess could end up dripping out of the other end of the fitting, so be aware of this possibility and don't work directly on a beautiful table. So to summarise, if you feel confident to use super glue, it works really well. If not, you can use PVA wood glue, although it will take longer to set. Onwards and upwards, the first four parts you need are the small reducer, the elbow, and the two 15mm pieces of copper pipe. Put glue around the inside end of the small reducer and glue in the longer piece of copper pipe. I'll be using super glue for these instructions. If you're using PVA glue instead, just use it when I use the super glue. 
Be aware that some of the fittings have letters stamped into them. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but you can endeavour to keep these facing backwards if you wish. Now put glue in one end of the elbow fitting and push it onto the other end of the copper pipe so it looks like this. Get the rubber tube and spread glue inside the small end of the reducer fitting. Push and twist the rubber tube so it slides fully into the narrow part of the fitting. Now get the short length of 15mm copper pipe which has a plastic reducer fixed in one end. Make sure the end with the reducer faces outwards don't accidentally stick it into the elbow. Put glue around the open end of the copper elbow and push the short length of copper pipe into it with the plastic reducer facing outwards. It should now look like this strange looking thing. This is the pressure pipe that takes the air from the pump to the horn. Now you'll need the two large 28mm diameter copper parts. Remove the bag from inside the large piece of pipe. Inside you'll find the flickering candle lamp, save this for later. Put glue around the inside of the large copper fitting and push it onto the 28mm copper pipe end of the other part as far as it will go. This is the housing for the air pump. Now gently pull the flicker effect lamp from its transparent tube and prepare to glue on the copper end cap. Run glue around the copper end cap fitting and push the transparent tube into it. Replace the flicker lamp into the tube and prepare to fix the lamp into the top of the pump housing fitting by passing the blue and yellow wires through the fitting as shown. This doesn't have to be airtight and you don't want to get glue over the wires so just put some glue around half the inside. Then push the lamp into the fitting ensuring the flame is in the required position. It should look like this. Lovely. Back to the base. Remove the top screw from the smallest Munson ring and loosen the other screw so the saddle part is really loose. Place the copper air pipe assembly into the Munson ring as shown. Then loosely replace the top screw. The pipe needs to be wobbly so you can line it up. Get the air pump and push its nozzle firmly into the plastic reducer in the end of the copper pipe. Now thread the pump's red and black wires through the pump housing as shown. Poke the four wires through the hole in the left side panel. Now if you are using PVA glue, run some around the inside of the hole where the copper pipe will fit. If you are using super glue, don't use it yet. Ease the copper pipe into the hole. So that a little of the pipe can be seen protruding on the inside. Line up the copper parts so they are parallel with the side of the enclosure and with the back of the enclosure. When it's all lined up properly, firmly tighten the Munson ring screws so it clamps the pipe in place. If you are using super glue, now slowly run plenty around the outside of the copper pipe where it enters the inside of the enclosure. Capillary action will draw it into the joint. And there you have it, a marvel of engineering created by your good self. Well done! Your Nempnet Throbwell is almost complete.